to our channel, Tommen's Backyard. Um, for those of you who don't know, I'm Kendra, and we have our channel basically geared for Canadian homesteading on small acreage, because we have under two acres and trying to do homesteading like gardening and chickens and um, canning and different things like that, preserves. And we also, we're here tonight also with um, Jenny and Rob, and they are from Denby Ranch. And we've kind of come together because with the Canadian homesteading, there's a lot of people looking to move out um, of the city at this point in the game. And a lot of people find it difficult. So we have two kind of different stories. They're ranchers and they're getting into gardening and things like that. And we're into gardening and chickens. So we have a couple different angles to look at. So we're here we'll kind of- get them a cow eventually. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Maybe a cow. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, we're kind of coming together and helping, wanting to help you guys answer some questions and just share our experience on what we've learned kind of along the way. So. Yeah. Uh, I'll just let Rob kind of introduce himself and what his channel is about. Sure. So I'm Rob. That's Jenny. Um, we, uh, you know, our our channel is just starting out. A little uh, homesteading adventure. We started to video log most of it. Um, kind of the changes in bringing back our ranch. Uh, Jenny and me, uh, we always wanted a rural acreage, but we didn't have the big budget to buy uh, <laughs> to buy the multi-million dollar place, so we had to start with what you could. So um, my background is uh, mechanical. I was an aircraft mechanic. Jenny, you were a uh, banking service advisor for power sports industry. Um, a little bit of everything, IT, that IT, kind of thing yeah. too. So. She's got all the knowledge, I just work here. <laughs> and uh, yeah, we, we made the switch to live rural after we had our daughter about six years ago. We started to uh, make steps to moving towards this, um, just to spend some more time with each other and uh, less time working for other people and more for ourselves. It's true. And get my horse. Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah, so I guess like the whole plan of this, we're hoping to do weekly live sessions on Thursday nights at seven o'clock just to kind of cover the basics of kind of how we've moved um, from city life, because we all four of us here came yeah. from the city with not growing up with the knowledge of gardening or livestock. So it is possible. So that's why we've named this series, No Experience Needed um, Rural Living and Self-Sufficiency. So that's what we're gonna hone in on. Like you don't need to necessarily have the experience in order to live this lifestyle. No, yeah, we're the same as, um, you know, when Kendra brought up the topic and idea, we thought it would be really important. We've ran into so many people, even locally, that have made the switch um, with no experience. You just We jumped with both feet in. We're just fortunate enough to have uh, a few years under our belt. Maybe not as many as you guys, but we're getting there. Like, we're pretty close to the same time we moved out. Um, yeah, I think we moved yeah. out of the city in 2015, but bought our house in 2017. Yeah, we moved to Griffith in 2014, eh? 14, yeah. And then we bought the farm here in 2020. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, so roughly around the same time. Yeah. Yeah. And like with us, um, gardening really started about 20 years ago for me. But I, when I did start, it was, I had like a five by eight garden in a little backyard and I'd go out and buy all my plants. Like my, I'd buy like two tomato plants and that was what I grew for the summer and one cucumber. And now like 20 years later, I have a big garden and I use my seeds for tomatoes and start my own plants from the seeds that I save. But also I'm not planting two tomato plants, I'm planting like 30 <laughs> to 50 tomato plants. So it's just, yeah. you know, in 20 <laughs> years, that's how far we've come, but it doesn't necessarily have to take that long. But no. and see, we are not there. No. Like when it comes to gardening, mm -mm. I do not have a green thumb. Um, give me animals. I have no yeah. problem breeding those guys, working with those guys, but gardening is not my thing by any means. So anything gardening wise for us initially was we, basically a bonus. Yeah. So if we got a little bit extra, that's perfect. But otherwise it's just, yeah. if it died, it died. <laughs> <laughs> and and our, our steps were similar to yours. Like we didn't have the background of raising livestock. No. Um, we, we, you had worked with horses before a little bit. As a kid, as a teenager, I leased yeah. a horse. And we, um, you know, we took the last few years, um, we kind of latched on as much knowledge as we could when we moved out in 2015, kind of assisting some neighbors 
and uh, that was helping them with, uh, they were, they're off-gridders, um, homesteaders, these, these guys out in Griffith, um, and they helped us uh, tremendously kind of learn about... Mostly pigs. Pigs, Mostly yeah. pigs. Mm-hmm. How to raise pigs, what it takes to raise pigs, um, and how to process pigs, and then, uh, and then we just moved into it on our own with our own two feet and now you know three years later we're running um cattle cattle pigs, pigs chickens, and chickens yeah and horses and on a, on a <laughs> medium a i guess small scale for for our, in the farming community size but for our area it's a medium-sized farm um now so now how many acres do you guys have so that's the unique part we started with dexter's so they're like the homesteaders cattle that's what they're known as well, you know, he left them. So. I like the cows. <laughs> small, small they're minis. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, they're like minis. They're basically minis. So we started with them, and we do rotational grazing. And uh, some of the stuff that Jenny had put into practice before, um, and we do it on our 40 acres here. Wow. So, so a little under 40 acres, yeah. but yeah, some of that is bush as well. And, um, and that was running 15 head, buying in hay, but making hay for the horses. So. Yeah. I thought maybe I should take a moment and introduce my husband over here, Jason. I don't want to leave him out. He's kind of behind the uh, the computer tonight. He's a little camera shy. He's our tech guy. <laughs> He's our tech 100%. guy. I don't mind this <laughs> job. <laughs> He's got. Well, we can come out. He wants to be left out. <laughs> Jay got all kinds of new toys. He's playing with there and stuff. I don't even know. trying different things out. Yeah. yeah. I just want to thank everyone who's popped on. Uh, we appreciate your support and for coming on for our first live. We're pretty excited. Yeah, it's all new to us, I guess. Yeah. And we were hopefully, hopefully that this topic can uh, provide some stimulating conversation, answer some questions yeah. from two different perspectives and two different ways to go about living rural. So, mm-hmm. yeah. So I guess. Dive into it. Do you want to dive into the <laughs> dive right in? Let's do it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so we can talk about. Uh, are, are we going to go with uh, choices first? Mm-hmm. Is that the plan? Choices, Where yeah. we started with? Sounds good to me. So, yeah. So for us, um, the number one thing when it came up to choices when going rural was uh, choosing properties. Mm. So do you want to, that's a big enough one to start with. That's yeah. the number one thing you're probably going to look at. Properties and location. Yeah. True. Yeah. So, um, I think, and they kind of come hand in hand because of budget, right? So... That's one of the other things is that if you only have so much money to spend, there's only certain areas you're going to be able to spend that money. That's true. And then that also dictates at the same time, what kind of housing, what kind of property you're actually going to get. Yeah. Yeah. Like we knew we had like a really, really tight budget when we moved. Um, Circumstances came in. Um, we didn't have much money and a lot of people are like we can't move to the country we don't have the money i can tell you from experience we had like almost nothing yeah and you can do it because we've done it i know you can do it it's just really it comes down to choices and sacrifices so like jenny had said if we have like this amount of money then we know we had to move to this area in order to fit our budget But then that also goes down to, okay, so when you're looking at your finances, if you have a small amount of finances, it's like there's marsh. A lot of marshy areas are cheaper, but do you really want to grow on marsh? Do you want to have marsh? No, I didn't want that. So then it's like, okay, well, then there's rocks. A lot of limestone and things like that around. So I didn't really want that either. So it's looking at every little bit and finding out what's in your budget. But also it's like, okay, so... For us, it wasn't a cattle thing, like, yeah. can, I have, can I have a ranch? But it was like, where can I garden? And is it possible to garden with such a like, short growing season here? Yeah. So those aspects really played a role into, okay, it literally pinpointed here. This is where we have to look. But then the location there we, we looked was like, the housing was different from what we were used to. So yeah. it really... If you look at your finances and then look at where geographically it's going to fit and look at what you want, you know, do you want the big house with small acreage? Do you want the big acreage with a small house? Do you want the small house and a small acreage? So there's a lot to consider when you're looking at 
getting a property or getting property with a house on it? Yeah. We found in our search, gearing more towards looking at running livestock opposed to gardens, was we needed the same sort of thing. We just needed space. Um, and it had to be usable land. It couldn't be, uh, um, you know, a pure swamp bed or a cliff faces. Yeah. Um, and we found in that search, our choices were narrowed down based in our budget, but it was based on you're either going to get land for your money or you're going to get infrastructure. Mm -hmm. So you had to make a choice between the two. Yeah. And like Kendra said, ours just led us on a pretty linear path right to mm -hmm. where we were. We were lucky that our other, where we were living was close to this place, but we looked all over Eastern Ontario, over. Canada, Northern Ontario. There was pockets where you can still find them. And even today, eh? There is still. They're still out there because we looked here. It's been really hard for us to grow our operation because there's just nothing for sale to grow. But we looked at other places and we could easily step out and go somewhere else. It's just, I guess, leading to the next point sacrifices you would sacrifice family location maybe it's not in the ideal spot you want to be that's to great. get that piece you want and, and that's kind of where we are, are you think we're ready to move to sure. that probably eh? what are the comments jay is anybody have any questions throw questions on that yet uh so remy asks is it spring yet <laughs> Okay. No. So, <laughs> not quite. But. I don't really know. Okay. Yeah, tell Remy we could throw the roller skates on in like two more days of rain. We'll probably. Be oh, that's true. We've been getting a little bit of rain here. We so. have been getting rain. We don't have barely any snow. So yeah, it's freezing good. rain. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you put the skates on tonight. Yeah. <laughs> so that's part of it too. We didn't have power this morning no. or last night. Um, yeah. so. That's the yeah. joy of living in the middle of nowhere, the really. Those are, again, those are sacrifices. Yes. Knowing you're going to lose power and have, yeah. like, terrible internet. So if we're, yes. we're glitchy at all, blame the location. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> we, we literally were going to go to every house and basically yeah. check to see who had the best internet yeah. at this point. <laughs> so <laughs> it's a give or take situation. But, yeah, there's a lot of sacrifices in that way. Oh, um, man, like, just basic internet, like... To run, uh, to run. When I was doing the, the volunteering, I, I volunteered with an Just ATV even club. FaceTime. Facetimes, um, video, our, our calling was Wi-Fi calling, and everybody just knew if the phone just dropped, oh, Rob's internet's terrible, or Jenny's internet's terrible. You're gonna, you don't have those amenities in some of these places you go, and it comes along with the territory with other things too that we didn't know we needed, like generators. How many times, yeah. you know? Did we lose power before I was like, that's it. We're getting a generator. Like, yeah, we're buying one, you know. Now we have three. <laughs> now, so now we have three. Yes, you yeah. do. You have a backup yeah. for the exactly. backup. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Quite literally. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Um, yeah. Or, or for you guys, too. You probably, you've seen it your first year. Like, I mean, a bad snowfall in yeah. where I grew up in a, in a small town. Like, it's considered a city. It's a small town. It was a bad snowfall well i only had to worry about the 16 feet of driveway we had to get to the road and then it would be covered well now the road might not be covered and the driveway was for us you couldn't do it with a snowblower it was yeah. the next step so those are sacrifices i think that maybe you weren't factoring in or we weren't factoring in initially that became into play mm -hmm. yeah and then like obviously like moving to the rural areas like especially where we're located like there's bigger sacrifices than just being in the suburbs right like yeah. so you're sacrificing the convenience of having like we literally used to live next door to own like across the street from a no frills yeah. at one point in one literally of our like a three minute walk yeah. like i used yeah. to walk all the time we were <laughs> going grab groceries for the night now 45 minutes an hour 45 50 minutes yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. you to, know so to the like, nearest group to the nearest yes. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's yes. not even like a cheaper uh, grocery store no 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 um, it's the nearest at that point yeah and, so and getting on with that like it changed um, preparing foods, yes. uh, finding how foods, you eat. how you eat, everything changed. Because it's not like we could be sitting around here having a box of pizza because the store closes at 7 o'clock at night and we're fortunate enough to have a general store here. But 
most communities don't have that. We didn't have it. Um, you know, we didn't have it at some point up here. They were closed, and the now there's yeah, an the owner. So well, when we first lived in Griffith, there was no food per se. Other no, than Pine Valley, but that was mainly breakfast. That yeah. was it. Five o'clock at night, you're done. So if you wanted a coffee, yeah. or you forgot milk, or sugar, or bread, or eggs, yeah. like that's it. You're out. You get away. You're fine till... if you like alcohol, though, because we have LCBOs <laughs> yeah. all over the place. It's like crazy. <laughs> yeah. But other but than it that, makes you. This is the part of like the homesteading aspect that I do like because it makes you branch out and try something else. If I don't have yeah. like sugar or you don't have tea brown sugar or something, but there's ways yeah. that we can use other things. It makes you, you really learn, yeah. adapt. Adapt to your cooking. Yeah. And even the fact that if you start cooking, you're like, oh, I don't have this. And it makes you think, okay, what else can I use for it? Oh, but yeah. the yeah. fact that like things are so far away, like an hour to the nearest grocery store, okay, it's time to get gardening because yep. you want to have food mm -hmm. available and you want to have it now. Or, you know, putting your canned goods away really takes away from needing to go to the grocery store that often. Yeah, and for, for us, like, we're, we've got to learn to grow food. We're getting there. Um, um, hopefully, we'll make some leaps this year and we've been, we planted our garlic off your video. We planted so his garlic. We're, we're hoping it's going to work. <laughs> but, I had no, no hands in this at all. Yeah. <laughs> For us, like we started when we moved out here, uh, you know, we couldn't do the grocery store runs every day and I was commuting from work. It's another sacrifice to work. We had to commute, but um, we started and we made the switch to wild game. We ate mainly wild game for, um, what was it? Two seasons, three yeah. seasons. And, and that's a learning curve on its own. It was. Like, cause I, totally different cooking. I didn't grow up on that. Despite yeah. being part newfie, um, yeah. I did not have wild game at all. So that was a whole learning curve on like just even getting over the taste is a little bit different and how you cook it is completely different. Um, definitely perfected it now because now we run grass fed uh, and finished. So it's lean meat. It's basically like that. It's similar. Yeah. So it's it's quite easy now to cook it. But yeah, it's a learning curve. Well, yeah. And, and I mean, all those things and sacrifices come from the house like the house you're sacrificing in your budget to get what you want the land might not be ideal but it's if it lines up with what you can get i think you guys would agree like making the sacrifices has been worth it in the end oh yeah like it's the lifestyle change is totally different your yeah. mindset is different you have to have yeah. uh you have to be adaptable in your mind to make different choices and even when times get hard, because they do get hard here sometimes, yeah. you have to be able to be like, okay, you know what? I can do this and push yourself through. Yeah. Because oftentimes you're just like, hey, I'm out. Yeah. You know, yeah. but mm. having that mindset. Things like that mindset trees, too, yeah. I find. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah so uh, Hickory Crop Farm says you learn pretty quick that Me recipes too. are a guideline and that it is a good idea to have substitution listed, okay. list printed and in your cookbook so that... Oh, 100%. If you don't have something, yeah. you may have a substitute. A guideline, for it. yeah, that's 100%. Yeah. yeah. Big yeah. time. There's lots of things I've learned to make that. From scratch? Yeah, from scratch. Because like, even like pita bread, nan bread, stuff like that. That, like, yeah. it's like, I, well, I can't, I can't even just get that at a general store. Yeah. yeah. So, no. um. But yeah. We, we took those to, you know, we, we took, you know, we had a bread maker, but now we just have, we make our own bread from scratch with a bread maker. And, because you probably won't have power when you need it. So. <laughs> but I mean, it, I mean, adapting to those things come and it come quicker than we thought. For it's us. true. You're forced to change, yeah. right? Yeah. Like, um, and it's not this horrible thing. Either. No, it's not. No. It's, it's, it's just not. kind of because like, then it's an accomplishment that you've you've basically overcome something. You're like, and it's yeah. something so small, but it's, it's you're winning every time, mm -hmm. right? So like that's the thing. Like so, you said there's sacrifices we have made. And we wouldn't regret them. And I think some of that is like, um, sorry, I lost my train of thought, but it's, there's joy in it because yes. you've yes. actually like you've grown yeah. or you've yes. come up a step in your life. So yeah. this lifestyle, it just, it makes you feel like, okay, I'm doing something with my life. Cause you're out there physically doing something like, yeah. you know, we all have done the nine to five jobs where oh, you're, you're just, you're something. like, okay, yeah, you come yeah. home and you're sitting on the couch, you're yeah. watching TV. Okay. You want to go to a movie? We're bored. But this, it's like, you're never bored. There's always something to do, but yet it's not 
like daunting work. It no. it no. makes you at night when you go to bed, you're like, okay, like tomorrow I'm, I've been success successful. Yeah. My day was worth it, and that comes with this lifestyle. Yeah. I think the other thing that leads us well into out of the sacrificing would be into the next thing we were going to touch on was community. I think mm -hmm. through a common, I guess, experience of everybody dealing with, you know, bad power outages, stocking up in food, um, keeping, you know, most people are running wood stoves out here um, and, and that because oil is expensive, propane is expensive and natural mm -hmm. gas doesn't exist here. Um, and in most places rural that you're if you're looking for budget wise you're probably not going to end up on natural gas so wood heat is a big thing and everybody knows everybody goes through the same cycles out here you know it's it's firewood season it's uh it's this season it's garden planting season then it's processing or hunting or whatever else so you get a pretty good sense of community um very quickly you like do. um it's true. Kendra, Kendra, you told that story when we were initially talking about these topics where Jay was down with the... Yeah, so I do want to touch again on the sacrifices at some point, but yeah. I'll, I'll just kind of tell back, yeah. Um, yeah. what he's talking about with community. So when we first moved up to where we're living now, my husband had hip surgery like within like weeks of moving into our house. Yeah, we just bought the house basically and, and he, in, in about a month. Yeah. He was About laid a month up. And a week or so, I had surgery. Yeah. <laughs> so, like, and then it was literally, we moved in the end of October, beginning of November. About that, yeah. And we got, like, dumped on in November. Like, seriously dumped on. He's laid up in bed. My daughter, at this point, I don't know, she was so young, like five, yeah. I think, maybe? Maybe six. Anyway, but it was, like, all up to me. We didn't come, like, when we moved up, I had like a Toyota Yaris, okay? Like, it, I had no four by four, four wheel drive, anything. And we didn't have like a machinery to push wood out, uh, like a plow or anything like that. We didn't have a four wheeler. And we really didn't know a lot of neighbors. We knew like one neighbor. <laughs> and so we moved up and it was like, we got, I want to say, like, 30 centimeters of snow. What oh, that year was bad. Yeah, more. Oh, it was like, bad, it yeah. was so bad. I remember, so I'm out there with a shovel, because that's all I know, and that's all that I had. And I'm out there, and I'm by myself, and I'm just like, our driveway isn't huge, but it's big enough. It's probably about 60 enough. feet. It's a big enough one. It's, I know. It's one, it's one yeah. that you kind of... So, as I was say, we yeah. had to get him to his um, follow-up with the surgeon, and we got dumped on and I'm out there shoveling and I'm shoveling and I'm like literally in tears. Like, I'm like, I can't do this. Like I, I was beside myself and I, remember, I was so mad. I was like angry almost with God because I'm like, why didn't you bring me here? Like I'm stuck here. I can't do anything. I don't know anybody. Yeah. And I'm like, I had it. I was like, that's it. I'm done. I'm out. We were here like a couple months at that. But what I will say is when we lived in the city, we used to have in the city um, little patches of grass we used to share with our neighbors. And we, I'd go out, Jade'd go out, and we'd shovel our little driveway, you know, with a shovel. And it would, you'd put one on one side and the bank got big, so then you'd throw it on the other side. And our neighbor, like, legit threatened so many times she was going to call the police on me because I put snow on our shared grass draped over yeah. so then i'm thinking i'm out here and i'm like stuck in the middle of nowhere with a little yaris and a 30 40 centimeters of snow and i'm breaking down because my husband's laid up and honest to goodness our neighbors i don't even know if it was our neighbor next door or neighbor down the road somebody came and plowed us out and i that moment like really was like wow like people are nice up here mm -hmm. like honestly like the community up here are like they're fantastic we have like the best neighbors yeah. and they've been so friendly so helpful when something happens people pull together and they help each other out and i don't think like if it wasn't for a community i don't know that i'd still be here like oh, you do exactly, you yeah. make do with what you have and i'd probably still try but they made a huge impact on me staying here. Yeah. So community is a really big thing when you move it. Like, it was huge. It was, it, anyway, it really helped us. So I don't know. We were similar. Was I was, I was, I was overseas yes, at, that winter. A lot. And 
you were home with a four wheeler and a plow, I and, was I, and I was. At that time, I think. No, that was the winter before. Oh, winter, okay. I was like, I left her with the four wheeler and a plow, but like I didn't really know how to use it myself, either one, and you didn't the really know. The plow truck was sketchy. And the plow <laughs> truck wasn't great. I, I wasn't using that. <laughs> and that winter was bad. It was like, bad. It, it was, was it so bad. It snowed every other day, yeah. and I Not remember. Not five her, centimeters. It was no. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> I think I think that that winter when we moved. Like at the end of winter, we were almost like five, five and a half. Yeah. I have pictures of us going in, like we're digging to try and out find it, but yeah. where the oil would come to yeah. the side, and we had to dig out where yeah. they come to fill up the oil, and there was snow up to no, here. No, I think it was pretty close to your shoulders. It was so bad that now year. some of it's Sorry, some, no, the, it's all good. the yeah. roof or drifts and stuff, <laughs> but still, it was. It was I, insane. I was in the south of the Sahara and I was just <laughs> happy I wasn't there. <laughs> but I, Do you think so? <laughs> I, uh, yeah. I, I, I remember you calling and you're like, well, it's bad, but you had me friends with the locals up here. She's like, you know what? Yeah. They're helping me out. You know, they're they're keeping the driveway plowed for us. You've made really good friends with um, friends who are now our, some of our best friends, is, yeah. you know, Larissa and Chad and Kendall and them. But, anyway, so they're. There, they became um, quick friends, and when I came home, I was, I didn't have to worry about anything. And when I came back, I couldn't believe it. My stuff wasn't all broken. Like these people <laughs> took care of the stuff. They helped Jenny through the winter for nothing. They didn't ask for nothing. They're That's really just nice. how people are. And when we chose to look for properties, we knew we were coming back to this community because we liked okay, it. Well, not there. initially. Well, initially we couldn't afford it for one. But and initially, yeah. well, this is we had our daughter though too. So yeah. initially it was okay. Well, I want to go closer to a little bit closer to town if we're looking for a farm. Yeah. And like part of that is because of the amenities. So we had already struggled with the amenities at the time. Yeah. They're much better here now because there yes. has been locals that have opened stores and stuff yeah. like that. Um, there's been some change of hands in some other stores. Um, but no, initially we actually were moving towards town um, before we actually oh, bought this farm. Yes, but that was based on, uh, on, on at the time there was just nothing available. No. And the pricing was so wild. Um, but I was going to be disappointed to leave because I yeah. loved our community. So when, when this farm became available and it was literally, what, we're 13 minutes from what's now our Airbnb. Yeah. Um, yeah, that was like a no-brainer. Yeah, and I mean, <laughs> the thing the thing about that though was we would have went to town maybe a year after living out here and I don't think we would have made it maybe, maybe a year. That's probably it. Because how could you go back now? It's hard. I, you yeah. know, like it, now you have space and, and peace and quiet and good community like I, I i couldn't i couldn't go back to town i can't even do a night or two in it without pulling my hair out or scratching my head why somebody would want to be there it was funny i was talking to rob and jenny a few days ago we were over and i was saying like one of my fears of moving oh, to yeah. the country <laughs> <laughs> that's so good yeah. i seriously i was terrified of moving to the country because i you know i'm from the city all my life and I'm thinking like, oh no, I'm going to move to the country, the middle of nowhere, where there's no cell service, and I'm, I'm going to get like murdered in the bush. No kidding, that was a legit fear. <laughs> and now, like that, I'm here. Every time I like, we've been here for what, like six. This is years? our seventh uh, winter so far. When I go to the city, um, I go down to visit my mom. I do the you know Costco grocery shop that thing, and I'm like, I'm terrified to go to the city. I'm like, get me back home. Yeah. But yeah. it's, you know, it's, you just, you, you don't want to go back once you're out, but no. it's a hard step for people to make to actually go out at first, you know? Well, I think that, you know, making those choices of like leaving the unknown was scary at first, it but is. those kind of things were, were stuff that, you know, we, we took for granted until you kind of mentioned it. I'm like, oh my God, she's right. Like we don't. Like we, we, we lock our vehicles when we're in town. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we, yeah. <laughs> Not out here. But. <laughs> when we go in town, everything's locked, everything's covered. Yeah. Like, there's oh. nothing left visible. Yeah, it's, it's uh, uh, it, yeah. It doesn't and, make much sense. No. You think about it. No. But out, out here has been good, and I think out anywhere. You, in a your row, neighbors watch 
for you though. Yes. Like, yes. If you have a strange car come to your place when you're not there or something, you're like, hey, you know, there's a strange car we've never seen at your place before. I really like that. Yeah. Like, I yeah. like the fact that you know what, someone's watching yeah. over my place while I'm gone. Yeah. Well, we got we got stuck in town. Um, a you was it the first snowfall of the year they closed the road because nobody had winter tires yeah so we were in the truck the cops wouldn't let <laughs> us go the hill. they wouldn't let us go through i'm like listen i got winter tires we've been we've living out here for long enough we know, we know the road let us through we have cattle and livestock to take care of and the cops said no you're not going through so <laughs> we were stuck in the truck for 40 minutes and i was I like so. we we need to call and call the neighbors we called the neighbors like hey can, can can well, you check on our livestock for us? Yeah, no problem. Yeah. Drop what they were doing. It's freezing rain and snow up, you know, and they're, I don't know what they are, a kilometer down from us. Um, and we packed her six month old daughter up, come and checked all our livestock for us. Yeah, everybody's put away for bed. Have a good night, guys. Uh-huh. And, and, and like that, that is just so nice to have in the yeah. back of your hand when you're living out here is having that sense of community it's, and people that can help you. Yeah. Just saying that, how many neighbors do you have their phone numbers for everybody yeah. yeah you have like i have like pretty much all of our neighbors phone numbers yeah. are a way to contact them yeah in the city how many oh, neighbors phone not. numbers did you have i didn't have one no. i didn't even have my next door neighbor like no he said us. hi and yeah. you know stuff like that but it was never to this extent mm-hmm. i didn't even know the last name i didn't either no. like, yeah. but that's the thing is that like so maybe well we were in the suburbs right Basically, you were. I, would, I, I, I grew up you in, were in town. In too, town kind of. Yeah. I didn't know the you last You guys were in a yeah. condo, right? Was that no, a, so no. we had it. We owned our own house and then we rented for a year. Um, it was a duplex we rented for yeah, the last so, yeah. year. Yeah, so. Okay. Um, yeah, so. Yeah, so like I only had. I grew up with only one neighbor because the other side of me was the airport. Yeah. Um, but at the same time, like, there's only so many. You didn't know everybody in that town. Like, here now, it's like. We basically know everybody in the town, not just our own road. It's like yeah. the other four that make up the town, maybe. <laughs> so you know everybody by their vehicle. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that too. But but I, I think that's something that it's not just here. No, it's it can't be. you know no. we spent two years in Labrador mm-hmm. um, with work. I was up there for two years, and that was a small community, tight knit, and uh, you know it it was just like that. Everybody knew everybody, and. Uh, it was nice, you know. It, it was it was a nice feeling to to know everyone and to have such a large um, social network and groups of people that you can work with to uh, to help you out if you need it. And those are some yeah. of the things like that. Those sacrifices that you you're you're yeah. su- you know you're giving up your social activities or your social outings. Yeah. You're giving up that closeness. Like we used to live right close to my brother we didn't live yeah. far from my mother so moving up here we left our family to come here too so yeah. but you kind of get that back up here you know oh you, big you time definitely yeah. have those connections we, we're the same like our family's an hour and a half drive which is relatively <laughs> close um but it's just far enough they got a call before they come <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> that's yeah. nice so when choosing a property <laughs> Yeah, so, um, let's see, I'm just going to scroll through here. Um, He's just looking for some comments or questions. So Dave Knight was saying that my, my small town looks uh, looks like a GTA with condos and cars we don't have around here. Wow. Uh, Dana mentions that living in the country is all about community and helping the neighbor uh, yeah. folks in the city seem to... Uh, seem to be all about individualism more and more kind of like self-centered almost not saying that you know but you are more focused on okay i've got to go out and do this for that you know got to go and do my own driveway mow my own lawn and here like i have a neighbor like my lawn's like this big and she's like i'm gonna come down and do your lawn i'm like (laughs) okay (laughs) you know not all the time but it's different i don't know if there's maybe standoffish in a way i don't know how would you call that i think out here it's a different pace people are in a race to get anywhere or they're not looking to you know get the next step ahead it seems like everybody's just content um in in this community um in in our community here locally that no nobody's really pressured so you know for for you to say you know 
drive down the driveway with the tractor, like I, I have a tractor and I'm around now with a, a blade and a bucket on it. And if my neighbors haven't done their driveway yet, and I know it's only going to take me five minutes to pull the snow out of the way and clear it off for them, well, I, I, I do it. But in the city, like that'd be what somebody's gonna charge you fifty bucks to plow your driveway out, and and it just it doesn't make sense. Like why? Uh, but then like, it could also be a liability thing too, right? So someone could be like, well, why'd you put it there instead, and whatnot? It becomes an issue, right? Out here, that doesn't exist. No, exactly. And that's the one thing I did find shocking. I was like, wow, you know, <laughs> there's a lot more risks out here. Almost, I think that's kind of what it is. But yeah, just for. Anything else you can think oh, of? Jay, Jay's the uh, computer wizard now. <laughs> so one thing, um, I'll, once Jay kind of comes back, but I just wanted to round over about to um, the sacrifices again. So yes. one thing that um, we didn't really touch on was the sacrifices that a lot of people have with, have an issue with is jobs. Oh, yeah. So I just okay. wanted yeah. to kind of share like my experience. Like <clears throat> I worked in a general hospital for like 15 years, making decent money, like quite good money actually. And we moved up here and it was, it's about an hour and 40, hour and 50 minute drive from my house to my job at the time when we moved up. So for two years, I commuted. I did that two hour drive for two years. I would sometimes stay at my mom's for Monday to Thursday or Sunday to Wednesday and then <clears throat> come home and spend time with you know my husband and my daughter. And then eventually I got to the point where I was like, okay, and then I found a place to work within about a 40 minute drive from here. And now I'm solely just at home and having work to do, you know, online, but more focused on homeschooling my daughter and doing all the gardening and the canning and the bread making because that's where I want my time to be now. So it's funny, like at first, it's like, oh, I can't leave my good paying job yeah. and, you know, move back here. But eventually, like, you, you adjust your spending, you've made sacrifices on the cost of your living, and you're like, okay, I can give up and lose $15 an hour mm -hmm. to come closer to home. Eventually, you're like, okay, I can give up my job completely and still be able to survive. Yeah. And so those That's are some of those sacrifices that sometimes it it puts people at a halt on moving because they're like, where am I going to work? How am I going to pay my bills? Well, you adjust over time and you yeah. adjust your cost of living. Yes. And so that's something I've seen in banking, mm -hmm. basically. And we had that discussion earlier was that it doesn't matter how much you make. So like even for us initially, like... Well, I make half as much as what I did seven years ago. Right. And so, I live better now. <laughs> well, that's the thing, right? You, you adjust just because you yeah. make more money doesn't mean you're going to save all of that. No. Um, a lot of the times what happens is people are living outside of their means. Um, so, you know, a $100,000 job, they're still spending 80 yeah. um, with different lifestyle. Your lifestyle is completely different. That's what dictates your costs. Um, but as you change that lifestyle, so now maybe you're making, I don't know, maybe one person's working and they're making 60. Well, you know, you're still, you're might be at 40 yeah. Yeah. that you're actually spending yeah. of that. Like, so, and as you gradually change that lifestyle mm -hmm. again, so like in your case, you're saying, okay, well, I want to focus more on doing the canning and spending time with my daughter and other stuff like that. Well, now that's, that's going to change your lifestyle yeah. again. It's, it's crazy and because you're gonna less, I yeah. was like literally like spending three days a week at home with my daughter for two years. Yeah. yeah. And I'm now... 100% full time at home with my daughter for the last two years, and yeah. I will continue to do that. Yeah. But it's just, yeah. yeah. It's definitely a struggle, though. It is a struggle, and it's hard. Oh, it's farming not, is so gymnastics. So it's not easy. <laughs> <laughs> we, we, no, it is. We, 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 call them, yeah. we, we literally went from what me being home two to three months a year, um, if you added it all together. And yeah. I worked nights when I was home most of the time wow. to that, well, full, then, well, then we did two no, then years. No, then we did two years in Labrador and then I worked nine to five and then you were home most of the time. Yeah. And, and then with, we went 
with here. this switch, which is us all the time. I'm sure you're packing my bags at some point. But we I, I was wondering what the bag was over Yeah. <laughs> well that that brings up a topic. Like I lived out of a suitcase for all those years, you know, yeah. like almost a decade. And mm -hmm. I think that was the first thing you noticed that A is like, man, it's so nice not to trip over that thing at the yeah, front basically. door. And and now we we get to be here, but our day of what we want to do can change according to oh, the yeah. weather, it does. Um, how we're feeling that day, <coughs> what the priorities are, and yeah. whatever work we put out into the farm, it's not for somebody else, it's, mm -hmm. for, it's for us. Yeah. And yes, there's sacrifices, monetary sacrifices, like I can't go out and buy, like our, my skew is, is pretty well toast and we use the whole firewood, I'd love to buy a new skew. They're 20,000 bucks, and it's just out of the question because it doesn't make saying. sense. Yeah. Uh, I still think you need to get big blue, though. Yeah, I would love to, but, <laughs> but you, you know, you, you make adjustments, at, you know, in, a, in your, you know, your spending habits according to what your means are. But out here, I found that it's easier because you don't need to. You, you don't need it to work. You don't need it to be brand new or the best of the best or, you know, if it works you know, 60% of the time, that's great because you have all the time to use it. Yeah. Where when yeah. I was working, it had to work all the it time had to work or on that. I was going to miss it. that weekend and yeah. then I wouldn't be able to use it. So, it, so I feel like those budget cuts were easier for us to make yeah. Yeah. knowing that we have time. So we'll go back to the chat. So a uh, Hickory Croft uh, farm mentions the mortgage is what was killing them, mm. but they were uh, fortunate or lucky that to uh, to buy right before the pandemic. Oh, that's same. Um, yeah, same. <laughs> Ooh, we like just squeaked it <laughs> by a week, yeah. one wow. week. Wow, that's crazy. Um, they also mentioned, I feel for anyone that paid the prices, the homesteads have uh, homesteads have started the cost. It makes it so much t uh, tougher to make to take the, that plunge. It does. It does. So it's it's but, true. But in it a changes. Sense. Yeah. It yeah. Cha it comes back to now that changes your choices. Your location yeah. is your location now. Is Remember we talked different? about that? You'd be going farther north because they still give land away for free to Homestead and Labrador. And I oh, said yeah. to Jenny... You, you, you want to go to Labrador, right? guys? Like, you can literally farm for free. They will yeah. give you land. Mm -hmm. um, that's they, that's what I said to Jenny. Like, it, it yeah. comes to choices. You, you, you know, it's gotten harder, but they're out there. You just have to go further. You have to go yes. further. Yeah. And you've got to get creative, too. So, like, in our case... Yeah, we would love to have more land, yeah. um, but we're utilizing what we have. And then the other thing is, is that we've we've done the research. We've, we're doing mob grazing to be able to put more livestock on yeah. our land. Um, we're using spots that typically, like swamp, how we were talking about Martian swamp. Well, we have one little section of that. It's not fully swamp, but it's wet It's land, like marshy now, land. yeah, but we use it, and we, our cattle yeah. love it. Well, we have the s selected the right breed, so we can't run commercial cattle because they would be up to their belly in mud up there but we run a lighter frame cattle that's less hard on the land and they're able to graze that section that otherwise was wrote off as useless but to us it's now five acres that we get to graze on yeah and multiple times but we had to make that because i couldn't afford the perfectly tilled field of the of farms that, that that are out of the budget yeah. So you, you have to make those choices, I guess. So, and then the other thing is, you can have the perfect farm, you can have the perfect homestead, um, but then it also kind of, in a way, forces you to spend more money. Yeah. Um, so that, like uh, you're talking about, till, like I'd love to have till land. Well, if we had tillable land, then it means we're going to be like, well, why wouldn't we make our own crops for our animals, right? That becomes more time, more gas, more machinery. Like, it's... It still all builds in the end, so almost starting small it, it's and with nothing, yeah. kind of is better in a way. Yeah. Starting small is key, I yeah. think. It, there's less risk, eh? There is less risk. Because, as you know, we've all made monetary sacrifices to get what we wanted, yeah. so the budget's paper thin, and when you screw something up, it really hurts those first few years. So mm -hmm. if you have a smaller, um, a smaller outlook or a smaller goal, and it doesn't go well while well, you lose smaller too. Which you is do nice. this, yes. So, yeah. is there any other comments or questions? Or? Be I don't though. see too many questions. Uh, they're just talking about different uh, pricings of uh, acreage. Oh, yeah. Um, well, that gives a good example. So, um, I'm part of the, now I'm part of the Beef Farmers of Ontario, so they sent out a newsletter 
they're saying now it's like thirty six hundred dollars an acre. Yeah, is what wow. it is, and and you know that's wild. That is it really is and wild. only like when we were looking back, say even ten years ago, it was about fifteen hundred. Yeah, what you were taken mean? again, depending on the location yeah. where yeah. you were looking. Like we, I was even looking up in Cochrane. Yeah. Uh, and it was literally a thousand an acre. Yeah. yeah. Uh, around where we live now, it was about fifteen to two thousand, depending on again location and and, yeah. and everything else there. So. So chances are, with that being said, there's going to be a lot more people who are buying um, bush lots. Yeah. Um, and that was one discussion. Like that was a, a big debate that we had too, because the cheaper way to go was to basically buy. Forested land, uh, like a hunt camp in yeah. a way, basically yeah. a hunt camp converted to um, the ranch that we wanted. Um, now looking back, we have, oh. we were like, wow. there's no way we'd ever do that. Like that was so silly to think that way. Like clearing land is ridiculously expensive, yes. um, and and the costs have doubled since we yeah, already I can believe it. in yeah. fuel and whatever. So if you can. When you're focusing in on your land and you find like what you guys have which is you know a good half an acre or, or whatnot of cleared land that you can use for a garden yeah. like that is just ideal that's invaluable. Thing, like, you know? like you know so a lot of people even with a, a large budget or a small budget doesn't matter they always want to have like 10 15 20 50 100 acres you don't need it you don't so need i it. I will tell you, we were looking for nothing under 25 acres. Like, we wanted yeah, acreage. Yeah. We wanted to be able to cut our own wood and have, you know, and Just for, the space. Yeah, yeah. and privacy yeah. and space. Yeah. But I will tell you, like, we can do a lot with under two acres. You yeah. just have to know how to plan it right. Yeah. And we wanted over 50. We, we were looking over 50, and it just wasn't happening. Yeah. And now we're running. So we ran 16 head of cattle. Mm -hmm. and two horses on our 40 acres the very first year and it hadn't been farmed in <laughs> i don't know I 10 15 10, years 10 so plus years, yeah. we we grazed them appropriately um you know we fattened those cattle up on all grass and they brought the land back for us yeah, but good. everyone said you'll never run 15 head of cattle on 14 acres or on 40 acres yeah and you gotta think that so it's not even 40 acres really. no it's more our closely. actual pastures seven I think. 17, 18, depending. It's getting a little bigger now, but... Yeah, 17 to 20. And, and it's probably the same as when you guys... Like, we thought that's way too small. We're never going to be able to do it. And then we said, well, you know, we had some good buys on cattle. We'll take them higher. Um, we'll graze it out. And then we'll sell them if we can't sustain. And we found mm -hmm. out that we could sustain. Mm -hmm. um, and it's probably the same as you guys in your garden. You found that your acreage is... Like, well, I've seen your pantry. You guys have a lot of canning ability you grow a lot of food out of that plot so yeah, yeah. so you don't always have to go big yeah <laughs> no you, can, you, you know you it. don't have hickory to hickory croft farm though uh, has a good point though uh, they say uh but be careful if you're in an area with a functioning municipality to know the bylaws before you buy it if you're getting smaller properties true. or you may get told one day you can't do certain things yeah and it's true i mean it's becoming more more yeah. and it, mostly with housing though right? usually with housing I, I know for our township the township next to us and the one above us um, they've all allowed small scale agricultural in some way shape or form there's exceptions to that if you're buying a property with uh you know a a, a property with a an environmental tag on it or whatever in ontario like you can't mm -hmm. it, there's not much you can do yeah. Um, so that might be something to look for. Like even our, yeah, but even our Calabogie um, township is quite organized. Yep. Um, and Calabogie is what? It's like a cottage country. It's it's quite yep. developed. Um, our land there, we still had our horse on that property, on our waterfront property. Yeah. Um, and I looked at it. The zoning is still technically has farming. residential farm yes and most that is the key that you need to find on your property is residential farm yeah if it says in our township here you guys well you guys already have a structure but we have friends that are looking at building structures on just forested land here if it says agricultural only and there's no residential on it it's becoming an issue or mm -hmm. if it says forested or, or or recreational property only well then they can't put a permanent dwelling so that's something that's township to township that might vary. He's got a good point there. Yeah, yeah. that's true. Yeah. 
um, Dave Knight mentioned, mentioned uh, that he wanted a 125 acre farm. Uh, I'm not sure what the 18 means, but it says at 85,000 uh, at 20% in 1980, this is what it is uh, coming again, kids. So meaning that the interest, yeah. Is the interest rates going up. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the thing that you'll find too is you can't borrow money for just land in yeah. most cases, right? Yeah, you so or, you either, or you're paying. Or you're paying yeah. crazy interest rates. Yeah. And Jenny is the... Uh, yeah, no, yeah. You, you basically had to have it, a pulled out payment for that. Unless you're doing like a private lender or a specialty lender. Um, yeah. That was the only case when it comes to anything that didn't have well septic and a building on it. Um, that right. was the case there. So, but we like we were lucky. We didn't have to really worry about that. We had the opportunity to kind of avoid that and just just go ahead yeah. if we wanted to. But I'm glad we went the way we went. Um, I'd say one of the biggest struggles for us was finding the appropriate house. Yeah. Um, with the land per se too, but because we found some beautiful farms, but they had a like an old, massive. you know, massive home built in the you know, 20s or 30s with, you know, seven to 10 bedrooms and... And we're family of three. Yeah. Like, that's it. I just thought the <laughs> operating expenses on heating oh, and yeah. keeping that house up to date and, and, you know, doing the renovations would suck all the budget out of doing any sort of livestock production, even our time to put in for gardening or, or raising our own feed. Yeah, it, I'd it be just stuck cleaning be, yeah. the yeah. entire time. Yeah. yeah. That's true. That's yeah, actually, uh, me and you acres mentioned earlier about uh, working... Uh, and big houses, so they said, or uh, Angie said, Mike was always working. We both had full time jobs. He worked way more hours, all to pay for a house we were never in. That's right. it. Sorry, that's big, a big house that you were yeah. never in, right? Yeah. So yeah. Um, that's the thing. Like yeah. you're in the city, I know you guys can probably, but we seen each other's like in occasionally <laughs> on weekends yeah. and sometimes in the evenings because he worked a nine to five job Monday to Friday. I work shift work, and I always took the evening three to eleven shift, Sometimes and I had to work every midnight. Sunday. Yeah, and it, I did that so that I was home when he was working, and then you know there's only a couple hour gap to someone to watch Hannah. It was like we barely see each other, but we, yeah, that you was... know. But this is so. This is why we don't have our other house. This is why it's an Airbnb. Is because it was massive. Like it's we didn't much. even use the upstairs. So it's a four bedroom house, but like what. We, we used the upstairs to do laundry and sleep. That was it. And that was it. And half the time, the other side of the rooms were all closed. Like, well, it the, was just too much. So we, the upkeep. we just did the numbers on it last year, but it'd be drastically different this year. The numbers on, so the home we, ha we have on our farm here is very small. Yes. Um, it's a one bedroom downstairs, a loft bedroom upstairs, and it's a, it's a very tiny home. It's a basement, but. Um, and it has a basement. Unfinished. But over there, coming from that four or five bedroom home, and we're on wood heat here with an oil as a backup where that place is propane in floor heating and electric baseboard upstairs. Mm -hmm. The monthly expenses to run that house would keep you up at night. Like, thankfully, Jenny's got it. I think it was, what, 2400 for the year? That was... Just in Just propane. in propane. I didn't do electricity yeah. yet. And then electricity... That was just propane. At, yeah, and electricity was looking at roughly 200 a month. Like, that's, um, you know, I guess previous to the interest rates going up, that'd be most people's mortgage, just in wow. your heat and hydro yeah. costs alone on such a large home. And that's with like nobody there pretty much over the winter. Like we yeah. have people like, we have a young couple that stays there on the weekends, but the rest of the week, they have, yeah. they, they're the people, like they'll unplug the couches, everything. They unplug everything. Yeah. There's like, the heat is down to the very minimal so that they save yeah. money, but like that's how much it is. Wow. I mean, when we first moved up, we were, we were using oil. Uh, wood stove right now but we still use the oil at times mm -hmm. but when we first moved we didn't have the wood stove and I think it cost us for six months it was pretty close to 2,000 or so yeah, yeah. and yeah. our home is only like 900 yeah. or under square, square foot yeah, yeah. it's probably but similar, now, similar to ours like right? but now went, that we have the wood stove like yeah. we just went with Mike and Angie and we split um, a tandem right yeah yeah. So and what would we spend on that? Like about seven hundred. Seven hundred, so. and I think we're gonna get through the winter. If oh, not and, and another winter some, yeah. out of yeah. that wood. Like yeah, yeah. And yeah. for us, it's the same. Like we had to, we had that major storm this year, so we're in the similar areas, Angie and, and you guys, um, and we got hammered by that storm. 
So we've been, you know, it's been a mild winter, but we've just been burning poplar and, mm -hmm. um, and, and beach that came down in that storm. I never even got to our six acre woodlot yet no. to start hauling wood out of there, but there's enough deadfall around the yeah, fields to sustain mm -hmm. us for the winter. I probably got three winters of wood still yeah. cut in the bush and it took me maybe a month. So it, I think wood heat is certainly the the saver for us. And as you see, we're all probably a little red in the face. Yeah, it's I, so I got a little red. hot. <laughs> yeah, my bad. I put yeah. a stick. Of, it's good. It's good. It's I, nice. my shirt. I put a stick of black cherry in there. It was a mistake. <laughs> regret, yeah. instant yeah. regret. But I mean, now I don't I don't know who I was talking to. Actually, I think it was Mike. It was Mike. We were talking to him yesterday. And even I go to my mom's or my go to my brother's, and they have like heating but it's not a wood stove because they're in the city and you're like man where are the sweaters and blankets because the wood heat is so oh, much so warmer oh. than yeah. just having yeah. like you know forced air or baseboard heating yeah. that it it just heats your house better and you're you don't have that you don't get with ours up. we turn yeah. the oil on um for the night or you know yeah. if we're you know the fire isn't going great and you automatically get the heat but as soon as the temperature comes oh, it's yeah. down your freezing cold <laughs> I, I find too Lily. i love winters Lily. out here because it's so quiet there's no cottagers and Lily. you know tourism is really really non-existent in the winter time and then to curl up on the couch watch tv sit behind a box stove after the chores are done like yeah man is that ever soothing it it's nice. uh yeah that stuff is good it's good for the soul <laughs> instead of uh where before, you know, you got oil or whatever, and every time the furnace kicked on, I'm cheap. So all I would think is, well, there's more money going down the drain. Yeah. But now with yeah. the wood stove, I, it's nice. It's, yeah, it's I usually pop in a piece of wood or something, and I got to go out to the chickens, you know, Jay collect wood or yeah. shovel, and you come in and you're just like, yeah, this yeah. is good. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, I mean, good. we all still have that fear of wood in a way still, oh, too. Yeah. Um, I was. Totally I remember the first year. It's a little bit scary <laughs> <Can't> initially. <laughs> I'd have it up to like six hundred or something like that, like because we have like one of those uh, the gauge, yeah, stats yeah. or whatever. And Kendra would be like, "I'm staying up." I'm not, no, I'm not going not, to bed. Not, it's just going to catch fire. To like, I still do it. I like. I stayed up last night a little bit because I was like, a little bit worried that you didn't have it closed down. I'm like, I don't know. Like, it's doing something funky lately. And I, it's yeah. So. There's it takes getting used to 100 percent yeah and understanding the types of wood and how how they heat yeah. and whatnot so yeah. yeah there's a lot of learning curves to well, this, this type we, of living we had dead elm i don't know in most of your areas too you probably had the uh, emerald ash borer whatever come through it wrecked all the elm trees around us so there was there's a pile of standing dead elm i cut most of it the first year um and it was so it's standing dead and it's dry so i cut it and split it and there was a few nights where I was like, well, you know, it's minus 40 outside. I better stoke the stove up and go to bed. <laughs> oh, you wake up in the middle of the night, it's like 83 degrees in your house. And you're just, <laughs> Sweating. Not, you've got no, like not all the pain, aches and pains I have were gone, but man, was it hot. So I, I learned a lot about types of wood the first two years too. That's true. Yeah. yeah. Anything else on the chats there? Oh, I'm just, uh. Patrick Haas saying 100% wood uh, heat here. Dana says wood is so much uh, better. Uh, Patrick also says love the feel of that, that fire heat. Oh, yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, there's uh, Farmer Red says uh, we have a, a wood oil combo and get uh, oil free from a friend who owns a heating business. Oh, there you so go. So people nice. switching to propane have yeah. oil left. Yeah in the tank so we go drain them uh, into large totes. We gotta sucker your brother into that. Yeah. Yeah, I, we could, yeah. But, wow. yeah. I definitely think that wood heat is like one of those quintessential homestead or farming. Yeah. When we put it in, lit that first fire, that was a big moment. Yeah. That was a big moment. It is moment. cool. It so, is see, cool. I still debated on whether or not it was actually gonna be cheaper or not. And I have it until we do this year's kind of to figure out what it is costing us. Well, I can tell you it's a lot cheaper. I guess so. Yeah, I know for us it's out. definitely cheaper. Yeah. And, and having a small house makes it that much cheaper. Well, it should yes. be because last, yeah. I think I was 2200 last yeah. year in oil. So we have some friends. Um, so Ontario came out with a new law too where you're allowed to have two dwellings on a property, right? Um, but we have some friends that have a tiny home or whatever and they're looking at adding another one. But he was talking about like, so we're, what this house is similar to yours, probably 
less than a thousand square feet, I would guess. Um, and these guys are living on like 500 square feet. Um, wow. tiny home and yep. he had the amount of wood he was talking about going through was so minuscule I, I couldn't believe it I thought you know to drop his expenses that much and then he doesn't have hydro and his taxes are cheaper because everything's smaller like yeah. his cost of living is so small it must it must negate some of those income losses that you sacrifice moving out here I do know um, there's someone I know that has a tiny home and they actually I could not believe my eyes, but they had a wood stove that was yeah, yeah. Oh no kidding <laughs> like that. Like I probably like well, you can get the rocket stoves. They're supposed to be but really good. But the wood was like this big, and they put it in, and I'm like, what is this? It's kindling. <laughs> it was the neatest thing. I felt like it was in a little dollhouse. But they said like they had to open the windows. Oh, I wouldn't It got so it. hot wow. in there. Well, we definitely you know. I know even the dog's trying to run away right yeah, now. She's totally. like, she's like, let me out, guys! Like it's too hot in here. That that's uh, another thing too. Like people with animals, I think, and like we only had dogs for experience before coming into this, and watching our our dog, like she's nine now, but watching her out here compared to the city, she's a totally different animal. Oh, wow. yeah, like when your brother had to babysit her. Yeah. In a townhouse. Oh. Oh my gosh. He called us, he lived in Newmarket, which is a, a large city north of Toronto, and he called me and he's like, how do you live with this animal? <laughs> because she's never on a leash. She's never on a leash out here. She goes with us in the truck wherever we're going to go. I think she's quite well behaved, yeah. other than yeah. she doesn't like other dogs. But so in the city, that's like the worst case scenario. Oh, well, she hates Because there's dogs, dogs like right everywhere. next door. But. So he watched her for two days and she was on a leash and she hated the leash. So his wife, Corinne, was trying to walk her, and it was a nightmare. Then all the trucks going by, she was panicking. Because, Pacing at the door you know, because she couldn't figure it out. Like, all the noise yeah. and whatnot. We're not used to it, so. So I think that was another indicator of, like, just if the animals are doing that much better out here, rural, yeah. I think it's probably better for us, too. Probably. It was I worth the change. I, I have no regrets <clears throat> at all moving out, making the sacrifices. I mean making do with the budget and whatever else is, is part of it, but yeah. I wouldn't change it. I wouldn't change it for anything, really. Yeah. If it would cost us more money like to get what we have, we would have just had to go further away from civilization, and that sure. would have been fine, too. We would have made yeah. that work. Yeah. So it's to true. give everyone an idea, kind of like what? We're just under two hours from Ottawa. Yes. And then how from, far from Belleville? An hour and a half? An hour and a half. An hour and a half. An hour and a half. Yeah, so, and then... We're four to five minutes to Bancroft. Three and a half from Toronto. Would be what? Three and a half from Toronto. Peterborough. Two. About two, just over two. Yeah. yeah. So like that, just to give you an idea, kind of where we yeah. are, um, and like everything we looked at, basically, if you're within that, as long as you're outside of a major city or whatever, by at least an hour, you're you're cutting your costs quite a bit. Yeah. Yeah, it's for sure. Is. You know, the other thing, too, with communities, if we can circle back to that one last time before sure. I forget. The barter system is huge out here. We couldn't yes. afford to get some heavy equipment excavating done this winter. I mean, we probably could have made it in the budget, but we put a lot into our infrastructure this year, into our barn to fix some stuff there. So we traded um, a whole hog we raised a pig for our neighbors and they have a logging service which you'll find in most rural areas in ontario a there's loggers yeah. um so they brought their excavator or high hoe whatever it's called over um and they did so much work for us and at the end of the day they're like you know that whole pig that's too much but we're looking at you know hundreds and hundreds of dollars an hour to run one yeah. of these and they did it happy best trade ever both sides were happy and yeah. you know that's probably going to be an ongoing well, thing to get stuff done so that's great teaming yeah. up has been good and I you gotta know. learn to work with people too you because too. Yeah. when we looked at like yes we want to be independent but at the same time if you look at trying to even rent machinery so again now you're an hour outside of town and then um, you gotta learn how to use it and then you gotta learn how to yeah. use it so like basically at that point it's not a like oh yeah i might only need it for three hours well you have to take for the whole weekend anyways because by the you time do. you, you yeah. know, get there, bring it home, it's too dark, and then you're into the next day, and then it's just, it's a hassle. So, learning to work with, like, 
the people that you have around you yes. yeah. um, has definitely benefited us. Well, even we did that trade, right? Like you've helped us and we, we helped you guys do mm -hmm. those chickens and chickens. it's a good trade. Those oh, are good yeah. trades. Yeah. That's, I learned some great stuff. It was good. Yeah. <laughs> and and for, <laughs> for us too, for our gardens, we have a neighbor up the road that has a tractor with a, a tiller on the back. Yeah, and he so comes up just... every year in the spring and he just tills everybody's gardens and yeah, trade whatever you think it's worth and we'll just trade them meat or <laughs> we could we raise meat products so we yeah. trade them meat and then your garden gets tilled and saves your back, which is nice. Mm. And, but otherwise that's twenty five hundred I think for the implement. Yeah, we look at, at it. It's thirty seven hundred dollars for and then what's uh, the point? Yeah. 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 Far, we'll um, use it once. Farmer Red says we trade as well. Uh we sell hay to a couple and we get our pork uh, in exchange and yeah. it's delicious. There you go, yeah. So anyone have a cow, uh, milk cow for sale, we've got hay to trade. <laughs> we did! We just, we <laughs> sold her. Uh, she was, we, we're not a milking outfit anymore. We've gone, well, we never were, but. No, it just happened to be it, that this she one just, could milk. She was excellent. Jenny can milk her in the field and we sold her to a couple. Um, they don't do YouTube or anything, but they're just up the road. They have seven acres and they run um they run pile of pigs yes. and they run goats that are free range around their yard they're low they're low i long still ones. don't understand that but yep they stay around and then they said we want a milk cow so they we cool. sold her to them and uh she i'm, I'm curious to see how it goes because <laughs> she can milk her freestanding but there's been a lot of people that come and stop at the farm and ask if they would mm -hmm. sell us a milk cow yeah wow. a lot of people wanting milk yeah uh, Dana was mentioning as much as we want to be completely independent and self-sufficient, home centers have to have friends yeah. slash uh, guests. A hundred percent. Yeah, big I time. Agree with that. Yeah, yeah, it, yeah. As much as we want to say we're self-sufficient, we can be. You can to still some have your degree, independency and, and yeah. that privacy. We rely on people. We well, I think, rely on each other. But I think it's yeah. always good. Yeah. I think you can be self-sufficient, but you can <laughs> thrive at being self-sufficient through community. Mm -hmm. True. Yeah. Yeah, it's true. And I remember, like, I have some friends that got me into canning and stuff, and they would do like bushels and bushels of like peaches or something. And I'm thinking, like, here I am doing three bushels of peaches. No. Here you are doing like eight. I'm like, why are we not like? Why don't I do pears and you do peach and we sw swap? Yeah. You know, like, but again, like to each their own. But I'm thinking we do so much. Sometimes I think we wear ourselves out trying to just do that do extra. Do everything. You know? You're right. So yeah. it's, there's a balance of being like temperate in that way because you also don't want to overextend yourself, um, whether it be physically or financially, right? So or extend past your skill set. Like, I, I, am, I can't mill lumber <laughs> to save my life. Like, it's just not something I'm interested in or I'm good at doing. I can do it with a chainsaw, but I need some actual lumber mill, like, the big white pine that we have down and we're going to barter with somebody who has a portable sawmill and they need meat and we have lo and we have the nice. timber to saw so he's going to do it for us nice. because otherwise you would exhaust yourself financially buying a mill trying to use your time to figure out how to run it efficiently and operate it safely mm -hmm. and just to get you're going to end up with the same result and just filling up your day again filling up your day yeah. again yeah. uh farmer <laughs> farmer red says well, I'm always looking, laugh out loud, I'm outside Renfrew. Oh, there we go. You'll just, yeah, yeah. just have to come by and talk to Rob and Jenny and oh, yeah. <laughs> work something out. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's good. Yeah, we've got, they're like, I don't know, they're, well, I had to get a bigger bar on the chainsaw to cut them down safely, white pine. They're mm. huge that are on the side of our hill and they're, the top's kind of broken that last big storm and it's, there's a bunch of them coming down and we need to mill that lumber, so... Oh, he's, he's talking about the milk cow. Oh, the milk cow. Yeah. Milk cow. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, if that we get it, tell him if we get another one, if we get another one, then uh, let us know. Yeah. <laughs> the contact farmer red. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, um, yeah, I don't know. Maybe we'll just kind of windle down here, but I think so. Yeah. I think it's been gone really well. So I'm hoping that if, you know, you guys are up for it, we're wanting to do this every Thursday and choose kind of different topics. So today yeah. was, you know, choices, sacrifices, and community. And so, um, yeah. you know, we're looking at kind of covering a wide range of things, but... Um, I think, yeah, big time. Yeah. We've got a lot that we can provide in what we've experienced. I think 
for us, we'd love to talk about homesteading versus ranching for profit or mm. supplementing your homestead um, through other means. Right? Yeah. 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 So and if, if there is any other topics that yes. like anybody yeah. wants to discuss, um, for sure, yeah. leave a comment because that's the whole point of this is basically for other people to learn. Yeah, so. and if you know anyone that wants to learn that uh, is in your community, just uh, invite them to uh, to these lives so that they can ask yeah. the questions. Um, and just, you can even email us, mm -hmm. one, uh, each of us or whatever. And yep. you can even yeah, so we're hoping to kind of be here, like I said, every Thursday and possibly, you know, like I said, we're going to cover like, you know, canning, preserving, gardening. They're going to cover like ranching and different things, mechanical things, whatever. Um, but you know, if there's something like, I know eventually we're hoping to have me and you acres come on yep. and talk about like the cost of building and, and their you know, experiences, their with, experience that. with that. Cause we don't have that experience. So perhaps there's something that you might have that, um, we don't, we'd love to have you on eventually too, but yep. we're hoping, you know, we can help people who want to move out of the country to feel confident and to have encouragement to do this because yeah. it's an awesome change. Yeah. Like he said, you know, he doesn't regret it. We don't regret it. I think a lot of people didn't support us in our, our no, decision. No. That's, that's, that's a whole other topic. Yeah. That's, that is that, a whole that's another topic. topic. Well, <laughs> We'd well, love to be here to support you. We were crazy. So yeah. you know what? We've yeah. got your back. Yeah. Yeah. People didn't exactly. have ours, yeah. but we got your back. Yeah. I'm telling uh, you. Yeah. <laughs> that, yeah. I think that's the oh, perfect yeah. way to leave it off tonight. Thank you guys uh, so much. Oh. Sorry, I was going to mention that uh, Dana mentioned uh, love to discuss how to make a modest living through homesteading. So that, there we yeah, go. that could be yeah. another thing that we can Absolutely. maybe uh, discuss. And thank you well. so much for everyone who's come on tonight. Yeah. You've made it well worth it. Thank you very much, guys. Appreciate <laughs> yes. it. Take care.